Friends, would you thank the band again for leading us in worship? Didn't they do a great job? We are so excited that you're here as we begin this new worship series called You've Been Served. I know that sounds a little strange. We're going to talk a lot more about that. We always want to, of course, welcome our online community. We're always grateful for your presence. And if you're new here in the room, thanks for coming. We're always grateful for you and, and grateful that you've chosen to be with us. And uh, we do indeed want to invite you to stop by the new here desk right outside the doors. You'll meet a great friend and learn a little bit more about the church. And we do have a gift for you that we hope you'll enjoy. And, and uh, if you haven't signed in, I sure want to encourage you to do that as well. You've got either the cards in the pews that say, tell us you're here. Or you've got the plastic cards that we call fast pass. And I hope that you'll share that with us. If you haven't pulled out your notes already, I sure want to encourage you to do that as well. I do hope you'll find that helpful. Uh, it is on the TMUMC app as well. So you've been served. Well, maybe you haven't today. May, and, and anybody been served? No, don't raise your hand. Um, sometimes when we hear that phrase, we, we feel as though it's got a real negative connotation, right? You've been served, and we don't know what to do with that information. And if you've ever been served, you clearly don't know what to do with what you're about to have served to you, right? And it's a strange concept. And my hunch is, and certainly my hope is, there aren't many in this room who've ever been served in that way. And so I just wanted to show you what it might feel like or look like when it catches you off guard. So we got a clip from the, from the TV show Scandal with Kerry Washington where she gets served. And I just want you to see what the expression on her face is and kind of how she feels when she gets served. Watch, just a real brief clip. What are you doing here? It wasn't my fault. I went out to call you, and when I came back, she disappeared. But it's okay because I'm going to her house right now, and I'm not letting her out of my sight once I get there. Once we get there so I can fix this. Oh, uh, Sharon won't give up the list. Good. We have a client in jail. She wanted the one thing that can get her out of jail. How is that possibly good? If that list hits out, Keating's ruined. It is on our client. That is the White House, by the way. It's not your responsibility if they look bad anymore. I don't want to see a man's reputation destroyed over something that is not true. And neither do I, but we've already picked sides, and this on our side is sitting in a D.C. jail. Good. I won't have to walk far. Olivia Pope, you've been served. That's a subpoena for Sharon Marquette's client list. You have two hours to produce it, so I'll see you in court. Going down. <laughs> you've been served. Isn't that funny? And so we all have this negative connotation of it. You've been served these papers that tell you you've got to go to court or you've got to face this issue or you've got to stand up to, to acknowledge this problem in your life. You've been served. And for all of us, we kind of look at that negatively, but I want to suggest that that phrase is very intentional. All it really means is you've been summoned. That is to say, you've been called. You've been called to an action. You've been called to some uh, issue. And in our case, as followers of Jesus, you've been called or summoned to serve. Here's what I believe about that in your notes. I believe that we're all called to serve. You've been summoned, in fact, that we're all summoned and all that means is, is we've been called to do this thing. We've been summoned by God to make this thing happen. And this thing is called service. It's called serving our neighbor. It's called loving our neighbor. It's called serving God. And, and here's the deal. We're all called to it. There are no exceptions. There is no sort of write down or write off. There is no sort of, well, I thought I would, or I, I'm not sure I could, or I don't know about that, or I'm not prepared. It's Everybody who is a follower of Jesus is summoned. You've been served. So that's our goal over these next couple of weeks is to better understand what that means and how it applies to us. And the Apostle Paul, who wrote a lot of the New Testament, most of those letters that are in the New Testament, he has several images of what this looks like. But when he writes to the church at Corinth, he has this powerful word about this. And, and I want to just read it out of the message rendering because I think it, it speaks volumes to us about the nature of all of us called. So in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning in verse 4, here's what Paul writes. God's various gifts are handed out everywhere, but they all originate with God's Spirit. God's various ministries are carried out everywhere, but they all originate with God's Spirit. God's various expressions of power are in action everywhere, but God himself is behind it all. Each person is given something to do that shows who God is. Everyone gets on it. Everyone benefits. All kinds of things are handed out by the Spirit to all kinds of people. Friends, that means you. That means you've been served. That means you've been summoned to serve God in the world. And that summons is real important because we're all called to it. And here's what I believe about that. 
I believe it all starts with her baptism. Uh, whether we were baptized as an infant years ago or a teenager a couple of years ago or if we were baptized just last week, if we are baptized, then that's our summoning. That's God calling us. That's God saying to us, I'm here for you and I'm here with you. Part of what we recognize is, is that our baptism is what equips us and prepares us and sends us into ministry. One only needs to look at the baptism of Jesus to understand that. All four of the Gospels record Jesus' baptism, but the three synoptics, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they record this great uh, accounting of it that speaks to the nature of how we're all called through a baptism. So in Luke's Gospel, for instance, in Luke chapter 3, um, the, the, the Spirit of God descends and opens up the heavens, and the Spirit of God descends like a dove. It's why our baptismal font has the dove on it. Because that's the Spirit of God descending. It represents the way in which God is descending upon us. And as Jesus is baptized, the, not only do the heavens open and not only does the Spirit descend, but there's this voice of God coming down from on high that says to Jesus, you are my child. I love you. With you, I am well pleased. And most of us look at that and write that off as that that's just Jesus, that Jesus is only the one that God loves, that Jesus is the only one with whom God is well pleased. And I just want to say, that's malarkey. I want you to know that at your baptism, whether it was when you were a baby and you didn't have a clue it was happening, or whether it was a teenager when you could make your profession of faith, or whether it was just last week, the heavens opened, friends. And God's voice came out to you and to everybody who gathered that particular day. And God said of you and for you and to you, you are my child. I am pleased with you. I love you. I want the very best for you. Our baptism says not only are you now a part of the community, but our baptism says you are ready for ministry. You see, in the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, what happened to Jesus right after his baptism? He got led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be harshed, hardened and prepared and tempted so that he would be ready for ministry. And once he went into the wilderness, after he came out of the wilderness, he was ready. He was prepared. And it started with his baptism and it went through the power of the Spirit who gave him all that he needed to do that. And I just want to say, if you're baptized here, you're ready. And I also want to say, if you haven't been baptized, let's do this thing. If you haven't been baptized, let's stop waiting. If you haven't received God's Spirit, if you haven't received the opportunity to know that God is with you and for you, and God's got an opportunity for you, and God wants the very best for you, man, come talk to me, or come talk to Chris, or come talk to Karen, or come talk to Doug, or come talk to Bill, because we want this gift for you. We want the opportunity for you to feel and sense that God is with you and for you. And it begins a powerful journey with Jesus that claims for us a very specific role, and it's that you are served. Here's what I further believe about that, as your notes indicate. Every follower of Jesus has been served by him. Everybody. Anybody who claims Jesus has been served by who he is, has been served by what he calls us to, and by being served by him... We are then served in order to go serve other people. I think that's what Jesus meant when Mark's gospel records his words in Mark chapter 10, when Jesus refers to himself and just says, the son of man has come not to be served, but to serve, right? And if indeed that's true, then those of us who follow Jesus, we need to go serve other people. We need to go lift up the downtrodden. We need to help uh, bind up the wounds of those who are hurting. We need to help set free those who are oppressed. We need to feed the hungry and clothe the naked and and visit those who are in prison and bring water to those who don't have any. We need to serve because that's who we're called to be. It's what Jesus is asking of us. And we don't need to kind of think about, um, gosh, how do I do that? And am I really ready? And can I do that? And man, I, I, don't, I don't have all the wisdom. I don't have all the knowledge. I don't have all the training. I don't have all the preparation. I just say, stop. <laughs> it's not true. Because you do. You have all that you need to do what God's asking you to do. Because God, if Scripture proves one thing, it proves this. Anything God calls us to, anything, whatever it is, if it's to climb Mount Everest or if it's to cross the sea or if it's to build a building or if it's to help the poor or if it's to bring a friend to Jesus, whatever it is, if God calls us to it, God is prepared to provide for us through it. 
I think what we need to recognize is every one of us in this room has been served. You've been summoned by God to do God's work in the world. I think that's what James meant when he wrote his uh, letter. Uh, James says right off the bat in the very first chapter, uh, verse 22, he just said, you must be doers of the word, not only hearers. Don't, Don't misrepresent yourself. Don't misrepresent God. Let's go do this thing. Let's quit talking about it. Let's quit philosophizing about it. Let's quit thinking, God, can I do this? Can I make it? We're all called. You do not have to be ordained. Look, I was stupid. Some of these other pastors were stupid. We had to go to seminary. Well, I'll just speak for myself. I'm sorry. (laughs) You don't have to go to seminary. You don't don't have to be paid by the church to work. You You don't have to have special training. You don't have to have all this knowledge. You don't have to have all this preparation. When you were baptized, the Holy Spirit descended upon you and gave you what you needed. And God is just waiting for us to go, oh, yeah, I I hear you, God. I want to do this, God. I'm not quite sure, God. And God says, yeah, you are. You can do this. I've given you what you need. The Spirit is with you. God's going to give you everything you need. Here's the one truth. The the, the belt that we've got around our waist or or the, the tool belt, rather, that you've got around your waist, every one of us has it. Every one of us has these two things on our tool belt. You got time and you got talent. Every last one of us. Every last one of us has the same amount of time. Every last one of us has a different talent, and that's by God's design. God wanted us to know that we've got all the same amount of time, but each one of us has got a different opportunity. And so the challenge for us is to recognize if we've been served, if we've been summoned, what are we going to do about it? Because God is looking and God is waiting. And and I'm sad and I'm sorry to say God is often tired of waiting because I think God was so ready when we got baptized. I think God was so excited whether we were a kid or a youth or an adult uh, when we were baptized that God was ready and we were too. Some of us just didn't know it. And some of us are ready and we haven't been baptized and all we need to do is get that water and and get that spirit and and recognize that God's going to come after us and God's going to get with us and God's going to kind of either gently nudge us or or push us out the door, one or the other. And both will actually be good. Because here's the reality, I believe. I think this summons to serve, I think this way in which we've been served, when, when all is said and done serving is really the fulfillment of the great commandments, right? Simple. The fulfillment of the great commandments. Love God, love others. That's all this service means. It means living love tangibly, physically, doing what it is God's calling us to do. And that tangibility becomes really important when we love God and when we love others, right? It's why we did the series the last several weeks about loving our neighbor, because it was a tangible way to say, hey, I love you, I cherish you, I want to know more about you, I want to be in relationship with you, I want to help you out, I want to encourage you, I want to lift you up, I want to take care of you however I can, I want to love you the way I love myself. That's what that's all about. Often you might hear me use this phrase because it's become a, I don't know, it's just stuck on my head and you know how you get stuck on phrases, right? And and so part of me just identifies service this way. I think service is quite literally how we honor God and how we bless others. When we are in service to the world, when we're in service to others, we are honoring God and, and we are serving other people. And I think that's what Peter meant when he wrote in his first letter, 1 Peter chapter 4, when he talked about the gifts that we have. We've all got them, and we need to use them as a way to serve other people and to honor God. And that's our calling, pure and simple. For every last one of us, it's different. And yet for every last one of us, it's the same. The sameness is we're all called, and we all have capacity The difference is each one of us does it uniquely as God has gifted us. And that's the powerful gift that I want to invite you to. So the the challenge here and now over the next several weeks is this. Have you been summoned? How's God calling you? Because if we're honest, 
Every last one of us has had some gut level feeling, some deep down sense, some, uh, some understanding that God is either nudging us or pushing us or pulling us or calling us. God is summoning us, and in the summoning, God wants us to respond. And some of us may be going, well, God, Daniel, I don't, I don't know, and I, I'm, I'm not sure, and I'm not ready, and, and I'm, I'm scared, and I just say, all of that's true. <laughs> but in every last instance, every last instance in Scripture, when God calls somebody, God always provides. God always makes a way. God always allows that person to do what it is only God can do through them You see, it's not about you. It's not your talent. It's not your ability. It's not your capacity. It's not your capability. It's God's in you. And the goal is to just figure out what is that God? It's why we offer the gift of to serve discovery. It's this online digital way for you to discover what your giftedness is. There's a URL right there on the screen, and that URL, I just want you to go to it. Some of you have already done that, and I just want to say thanks. Many of you already know the gifts of the Spirit that God's instowed within you. Many of you already know the passion that God's welled up within you. Many of you already know your ministry style. But if you don't, this is a great opportunity. Just go to that website. It takes roughly 30 minutes, and when you complete it, you now know what your job description is, what your ministry is. You now know what your passion is, what's burning within you to make a difference in the world, and you now know your ministry style, how are you going to get it done? My golly, we couldn't make it any simpler. I want to encourage and challenge you to, to do that very thing if you haven't already. And then if you want to know more, we offer the Gifted to Serve class. It's being offered literally right now, this day, at this hour, and at the 11 o'clock hour. If you've got nothing to do next hour at 11, just go right downstairs, room 160. It's right down those stairs. You'll learn more about what those gifts are, what your passion is, and what your ministry style is, and then you'll be ready because God's already been ready for you. God's already been waiting just like a good parent going, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. I'm ready for you to do this. I'm here for you to do this. I'm with you to do this. God is ready. The question is, are we? And I just want to suggest that you have everything you need, that God would not have summoned you had that not been the case. And I just want to thank God that I don't have to have all the answers and I don't have to be prepared in my own way and I don't have to have the, the sense of which I have the capacity because it's not mine and it's not yours. It's God's spirit within you. And so I'm just going to beg you, I'm just going to plead with you, discover your gifts, respond to the summons, answer the call, because the kingdom of God is waiting on you. The kingdom of God needs you, and God, just like a great parent, is right there waiting and will give you everything you need. Thanks be to God that everybody's equipped, that everybody's ready, and everybody can benefit. Let's do this thing. You've been served. Will you pray with me? Holy and loving God, thank you for the challenge. It's um, it's a bit scary. It doesn't always make sense, and we feel often like we're not ready. But what we're seeing and hearing and understanding from your word, God, is that we don't have to be ready so much as we just need to go. We need to trust. We need to believe that you have equipped us and empowered us and provided for us through your spirit, and that that will continue, God, every single step of the journey. So, God, give us courage. And while you're at it, God, help us to be encouraged that it's possible so that at every point, God, we will recognize it's actually your ministry, your service, not ours. We just get the benefit and the privilege of participating. Thank you, God. 
that you always provide and that you always make known that we have been served and that we can serve others in the name of Jesus Christ who's been risen from the dead and overcome and conquered every barrier there could possibly be. God, it's in his name that we pray now. Amen.